What's up everybody, Marcus Philly here, and it's time to train legs, and I'm doing it with the landmine today. So stay tuned, I got 30 moves for lower body with my favorite tool, the landmine. Let's hit it. I do not know why every guy isn't wearing a pair of Chubby's shorts. With my training style, I am moving in all directions, and I do not have time to be tugging and adjusting and pulling my shorts around. So the ultimate training short is my go-to when I wanna focus on moving well and feeling supported and comfortable the whole time without sacrificing style. During my days, I am moving fast and I'm staying on my feet. So the ultimate training short is my pick when you need to be ready for anything. It's got a super soft compression liner and can take me from clean and jerks to clowning around with my kids in a matter of moments. Chubby shorts come in an enormous range of solids, prints, patterns, and inseams to express your personality. I'm personally a fan of the five and a half inch inseam, especially on leg day. Remember, you gotta look good and move well. And don't miss Chubby's super soft joggers either. You can explore the full lineup at chubbies.team forward slash Marcus Philly. And be sure to use my code in the description below to get 15% off your first purchase. We'll start off with the goblet squad. First, you're gonna hold the bar right underneath your chin. Squat more upright for a more quad focused squat. If you reach your hips back, you're gonna get a much more glute focused squat pattern. Next up is the squat to press. To make this a little bit more of a full body movement, you just add a press. This can be done with both hands in the goblet position like you're seeing here, or if you want, you can switch to a single arm and do that squat to press pattern in the same way. Use the squat momentum to drive the bar up overhead. Next up is the angled squat to rotational press. A subtle shift of your body to one angle or the other while holding the barbell with the outside arm is gonna allow you to rotate and press through this squat with some great rotational strength work. Okay, next up is the hack squat. I love this one. By simply turning your body around, placing the barbell on your shoulder, you can perform a much more upright, quad-focused squat. Find a foot position that allows you to stay as vertical as possible and allows you to drive your knees out over your toes. Okay, next up we have the knees over toe squat. The landmine offers us a unique ability to have more stability when performing advanced movements. This particular advanced movement is going to involve you squeezing your glutes and driving your knees down forward way over your toes and trying to touch the ground with those knees. The more strength and flexibility you have, the closer those knees are going to get to the ground. For the landmine low hold squat jump, having an option that allows us to switch gears towards a more explosive squat pattern is easy with the landmine. Switch to this low hold position and simply just jump and produce as much power as you can. The landmine is going to keep you in the right position. The Cossack squat is one of my favorite squat patterns. Hold this in the goblet position or a low hold position with the landmine. It's a terrific way to get squat strength and mobility. You can build great quad strength while simultaneously working inner thigh of the non-working leg for mobility. Next up is the Cossack lunge, performed with a low hold or a goblet hold variation. Frontal plane strength or side to side squatting strength doesn't get hit nearly enough in our regular gym routine. Try this variation to build your frontal plane squatting strength. The curtsy squat with a zercher hold in the elbows. The curtsy squat with a slight step behind the working leg gives the glute a great stretch. This elbow loading position is gonna allow you to lean into the weight and line up your body well for maximal stretch on the glutes. Performing a suitcase reverse lunge can be done in either hand, contralateral or ipsilateral loaded. When we grip the landmine and the opposite arm to the working leg, it's called contralateral loading. When it's gripped on the same side as the working leg, it's called ipsilateral. Consider performing both of these variations. 
Now, supporting the landmine overhead is a great alternative to incorporate some shoulder stability into the reverse lunge. It may feel a touch easier on the lower body, so consider loading up slightly heavier. You can make that movement a more full body movement by lowering the landmine to your shoulder on each lunge step and then driving it back up overhead in the lunged press. This variation of the reverse lunge will demand more balance on the working leg, and if you make an effort to stand up very tall at the top of the knee drive reverse lunge, you're gonna get that knee elevated and it's gonna activate and get those glutes contracting on the working leg a bit more. Reverse lunges and forward lunges both train the legs differently. This combination is great for targeting both and can make for a great option for incorporating into conditioning work because it demands a lot of work capacity. The tall kneeling to standing with the landmine in the goblet position is great. It's gonna work your hip flexor strength as well as mobility alongside doing your normal single leg strength work from standing up tall on each rep. This slightly offset stance gives you the stability benefit of a two-legged squat, but it's gonna also give you the single leg bias strength training of a single leg squat variation. If you're looking for a more advanced single leg squat, then this is it. The skater squat where you reach your leg behind you and lightly tap the knee to the floor is gonna have to use a lot of strength and coordination. Use that landmine for balance and stability, but don't rest at the bottom. Commonly accepted as the king of all single leg squats, the landmine variation of the Bulgarian split squat adds just enough stability to make this even easier to really focus on quad and glute development without having to worry so much about balance where people often struggle. The front foot elevated knee over toe split squat is terrific for mobility. Elevate that front foot and send the knee out as far as possible over the toe as you can while keeping the heel of that foot down. Don't let the back knee touch the floor and you have the ultimate strength and mobility drill. And lastly, you can always regress your split squat down to a traditional regular split squat. Try to make the stance a width that allows each knee to be at 90 degrees when you touch your back knee to the floor. It's great for stability and single leg isolation. For getting started with unilateral hinging, I love the split stance RDL. The non-working leg should be about 6 to 12 inches behind the leading leg. You're going to keep 80 to 90% of your weight on that forward leg and don't let your back round. Now for a more advanced version, you can let the back leg come up off the floor as you hinge forward. Just be sure that you're keeping the back leg in line with your torso and that you're using the landmine just for enough balance so that you can get through this correctly. For the Romanian deadlift, this exercise really has only one cue that matters, and that is reach your hips back as far as you can. You'll feel an intense stretch on the hamstrings. And remember, try and keep your low back arched throughout the movement. The rotational deadlift is a nice variation to train parts of the low back that are important for day-to-day -day life movements. See, we almost never bend in straight lines, so training some rotational strength could be your ticket to a stronger back in day-to-day -day life. The rotational deadlift to press is performed with two hands on the bar and with your stance slightly rotated to one side. Complete a deadlift into a full press in one smooth motion. This is a great movement to work on rotational strength while also keeping things somewhat slow and controlled. For a faster and more explosive variation, switch to a single arm grip and plan to transfer the bar from one hand to the other as you press overhead. This is a terrific lift for coordination and speed, and that's why I love the rotational clean and press. This is the best single leg weighted hip thrust option that I know of. The landmine allows for optimal balance on this otherwise tricky coordination lift. 
I can't perform this very well with a traditional barbell hip thrust, but when I do the single leg hip thrust with a landmine, it works terrific. For the glute kickback, consider adjusting your setup to get the best range of motion possible. Add a pad underneath your knee, take the weight off, or if you're gonna use plates, make sure that they're small diameter plates so that you can get the full range of motion without banging the barbell into the ground. And last but not least, we can't have a lower body training session without some direct calf work. Keeping your legs straight and leaning into the landmine, I want you to move your feet back until your heels become slightly lifted off the floor. This is the optimal starting position where you're gonna be getting a full stretch at the bottom of each and every rep. And there it is, that's a wrap. 30 movements for your lower body using the landmine. Make sure you go put those into practice. Don't just be somebody who watches, make sure you go and do this stuff. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and comment below for the algorithm, help us reach more people and start changing lives one functional bodybuilding workout at a time.